Being a first time home buyer in the Seattle area can be a bit scary and overwhelming. I would imagine that buying your first home is probably the biggest investment of your life. I want to share with you some tips that every first time home buyer in the greater Seattle area should know. These tips will make the process easier and more fun. I'm Karen, and if we have not yet met, I'm a realtor in the greater Seattle area with John L. Scott. I like to share tips and tricks for home buyers and home sellers to make their journey easier. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to my channel. I appreciate all your comments and sharing my videos and my page. So what tips should you know so you don't make mistakes as a buyer? Firstly, you need to know what you want. Write down the top three things you want in a home and the top three things you don't want in a home. Everybody wants the perfect home, but it is possible that you may not find all your wants in a home for your price range. So you may have to go back and reevaluate your wants and needs. Remember, it is your first home, not your forever home. It may just be a stepping stone to the perfect one. Do your research. Don't just jump right in. Give me a call and I can set you up on a home search so you can see what is on the market in the price range you are looking. You can watch the market to see how fast homes are selling and what they are selling for. Are your top three items found in the houses in your price range? The more you know about the market and the homes available, the easier your decision will be. Do a budget. Do a written budget. It is the best way to know all of your expenses and your money outflow. This way you will know what a comfortable payment amount will be for you. Don't forget you have utilities for a house also. These are not included in your payment. Get pre-approved with a loan and if possible, Get the loan underwritten up front. This makes your offer much more appealing and solid. Figure out what price correlates with the payment you are comfortable with. Number five, be upfront with your loan officer. They are working for you. Often I hear that a buyer did not tell the lender about an account or a debt because of privacy. This could really jeopardize your home purchase. You will be working with your realtor and lender as a team throughout the whole process. They are on your side. Stick around until the end and I will tell you how you can get a list of things not to do during the loan process. Before making an offer, check with your lender to see what your payment will be with the sales price of the home you are interested in and the current taxes. Taxes for every home are different and interest rates can change daily while you are in the shopping stage. There are many different lenders and many different loan programs. Some have higher upfront fees and lower rates. Some have higher rates, but less upfront fees. Make sure you trust them and feel comfortable with them guiding you through the process. Ask your realtor for a referral. I have a list of lenders I work with that I know take good care of my clients. You want to know which loan you are pre-approved for and be sure your agent knows correctly. Different loan types can require different conditions in a home, and your financing contingency needs to state your loan type and down payment correctly, or it could jeopardize your earnest money deposit. There are four different loan types. There's an FHA loan, which is a government loan program. This typically has a lower down payment. They are for first time home buyers or for someone with a lower credit score or a higher debt to income ratio. USDA loans are zero down loans or 100% financing, but can only be used in rural areas that they specify. VA loans are for veterans or their spouses, and they are 100% financing or zero down loans. And then there are conventional loans, which are for people with higher credit scores and sometimes with higher down payments. Although sometimes they do have conventional loans as low as 1%. It depends on the market. Do you have student loans? If so, they can impact your debt to income ratio. So you need to make sure you talk this over with your lender. Number 10, lenders typically require two years of employment history. If you want to buy a house right out of college, your college generally counts as two years of employment. You will want to verify this with your lender. Number 11, 
You will need to know all three of your credit scores. There are three credit score companies, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. You will need to know all three of those. The lender is generally going to look at the middle score. Number 12, buy a house before you buy a car. Many people want to do this the other way around. They go out and they buy an expensive car, and then many times they cannot get approved for a house because their debt to income ratio is too high. Car loans are much easier to get than a mortgage loan. So go buy the car after you buy your house. I know cars are a necessity and they're fun to drive and you want a beautiful one, but remember, cars are depreciating assets. If you are trying to build wealth, prioritizing the house is most beneficial. Number 13, file your taxes. I am always surprised at how many people do not file their taxes. You will need to be able to show two years of the most recent income tax. If you have not filed, get this done before you find your perfect house because this can delay closing or possibly make it so you can't get the house. Number 14, always get a home inspection. Never buy a house without a home inspection unless you're a contractor. Even then, I would still get one. Even if a house is brand new everything, sometimes the upgrades are not installed correctly. This is one of your largest investments. It is nice to know everything that could be wrong with the house up front, so you don't have any surprises. They do cost a little bit of money, but the investment is well worth it. Number 15, always get title insurance. If you're getting a mortgage, you will be required to get title insurance. Title insurance ensures that if the title for some reason is not valid at any point after you buy the home, the title insurance will protect your interest in the home that you buy. Number 16, real estate is a long-term investment. There are some markets where real estate can be a great short-term investment, but nobody has a crystal ball in regards to the economy and it can change very quickly. It is very expensive to sell a home. So if you're going to buy one, you should be buying for the long term in most cases. Number 17, don't plan your moving day for closing day. Closing typically does not occur until 4 or 5 p.m. on the day of closing. And per the contract, possession is not until 9 p.m. Sometimes things happen early, but it really stinks when you have your moving truck all ready to go and you cannot get access to the house. Also, the closing date sometimes gets moved for various reasons. Repairs take longer than anticipated, the lending process takes longer, sometimes the date moves forward, and sometimes it takes longer. You will want to be sure to coordinate with both your lender and realtor before you book a moving truck or service. Number 18, along the same lines, don't give your 30-day notice to your rental until you know pretty sure that you will be closing and closing on time. If you can give yourself a couple weeks to move, it would be much easier on you. I don't want you to be homeless. Number 19, it takes 30 to 45 days usually to close on a house once you get mutual acceptance. You will want to be careful not to jeopardize your loan approval. Most buyers have a pre-approval before writing an offer. This is not a loan approval. There are still many steps that have to be taken in order to get final approval. Many times we don't get final approval until very close to the closing date. I always tell my clients that nothing is 100% sure until you get those keys in your hand. We do everything to be as close to 100% sure up front, but things can still happen. Look in the description below for a link to download the top credit do's and don'ts. Be very cognizant of your spending habits during this process on your credit cards and be sure to talk to your lender about any big purchases. One thing I want to be sure you are aware of is that taxes and homeowners insurance can change yearly. The government is always changing our tax rate on houses, so every year, your escrow account is going to adjust, which means your payment will then adjust if your taxes go higher or if they go lower.